Good morning. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar about secure wireless connectivity solutions for e-health. We're happy to spend this hour with you, and we look forward to many uh, questions. And uh, yes, I my name is Melena. I'm your moderator today, together with Sabrina. We have our presenter, Diego and Pelle, whom I will be presenting closer on the next slide. So in today's webinar, you will learn about connected health drivers, trends and solutions. You will also be able to ask questions to our experts towards the end of the webinar. And some housekeeping. Uh, things. So the webinar will be recorded and sent to you automatically. We invite you to ask questions and uh, you do so by clicking on this question mark. You see it to the right, so not raising hand, so we cannot um, have the audience speaking, but we will reply in written in case there is a question that we're not covering. And we in hope that you will join the conversation on social media. Let us know what you think about the webinar and the topic um, by hashtagging MyConnectedHealth. So looking forward to uh, get some feedback from you. So let me introduce the speakers today. Uh, first speaker is Diego Grassi. He's our Global Market Development Manager for IoT. He brings uh, over 23 years of experience in the semiconductor business, and he is an expert in connected healthcare and industrial IoT solutions. We're also very happy to have Pelle Svensson with us today. He is our Global Market Development Manager for Industry 4.0 and Healthcare in Short-Range Communication. Pelle brings over 35 years of experience in the business and is an expert in short-range wireless connectivity and industrial automation and communications. So with that, I'll hand over the word to Diego, who will give you an introduction in the technology and market drivers. No. Thank you very much, Malena, um, and good morning to all the listeners and good afternoon to the European listeners. So in today's webinars, as you say, we are will be focusing on wireless technology solution designed to securely connect IoT devices used in the healthcare industry. Um, if we move off on the first slide, Malena. Uh, we start our discussion, our webinar, with a first look on some key trends in the healthcare uh, uh, segments. We are quoting in these uh, slides some figures uh, taken from recent market research that remind us uh, of the considerable scale and global diffusion <coughs> excuse me, of important chronic diseases. So size and uh, global scale is certainly one, one uh, re relevant aspect of this industry. Another aspect is related to change. In fact, there are several concurrent changes that are uh, several concurrent mega trends that are uh, fueling change in the healthcare industry. There is on one side uh, an aging population in industrialized countries with an increasing incidence of non communicable chronic diseases. That uh, this population requires an efficient access to remote medical supervision. supervision when necessary and when necessary requires on-demand medical support. At the same time, this population is demanding new tools to retain its independence, autonomy and privacy. And still, all this while getting uh, medical supervision. Uh, if we move on the next slide, we see uh, still some uh, other aspects related to the big change uh, ongoing in healthcare. Yeah, we have a more um, a perspective, a more financial perspective, and we see that on one side, expenditures are booming in, in the healthcare uh, system. And uh, on the other side, on a more positive note, we have massive uh, saving opportunities. So uh, uh, related to the saving opportunities, there is in fact a consensus that uh, from, from several market studies and from analysts that uh, the increased use of uh, remote monitoring uh, that uh, it's uh, enabled, by, enabled by wireless connectivity in the medical sector will be uh, indeed uh, extremely helpful to limit meet this uh, cost uh, uh, increase. Uh, on the next chart, uh, we see uh, again uh, uh, another uh, other aspect related to, to change. So we said that the healthcare industry is expanding and is changing significantly. And now we see that uh, 
we see some figures here that uh, prove that the healthcare industry is already becoming smart. Um, on the supply side, in fact, technology innovation drives efficiency and enables new products. So we have a new technology and uh, one of uh, these technologies is wireless connectivity, the focus of this uh, discussion today, uh, but other technologies as well, uh, like uh, improvement in sensor technology, artificial intelligence and edge computing, and cloud analytics uh, uh, enabling uh, big data manipulation. So. Oh, the adoption of all these technologies, uh, including wireless connectivity, brings uh, um, uh, with IoT structural change uh, that translates into, also into new business models. And in fact, healthcare facilities are uh, deploying more and more electronic, uh, healthcare, uh, electronic uh, health system. Uh, services that were traditionally offered by healthcare personnel and doctors are transitioning to automated uh, interactions. And overall, we see a move from a traditional palliative, so called paper performance medicine, to a more preventative, value driven healthcare model. Uh, in the next slide, now we uh, focus uh, on, uh, we have a more detailed look at what are the IoT sub-segments uh, and application in uh, e-health. E -health. Uh, next slide. So uh, the use of wireless connectivity uh, and uh, as well as positioning technologies are at the core of digitization process affecting, uh, uh, in fact, every facet of the healthcare industry. Uh, we have actually a, a broad range of medical IoT devices that uh, are already on the market serving diverse use cases. And we uh, can categorize these use cases in three main domains, uh, as we see in this, in this chart. We have on, uh, on site professional care, we can call it uh, the connective hospital domain. Uh, there is a large number of remote patient monitoring IoT solutions that we can uh, cluster or categorize in uh, uh, so-called uh, connected patient uh, domain. And then we have uh, the assisted living domain, so with a number of applications that are used for stationary, stationary monitoring, um, stationary health monitoring, and wellness uh, monitoring. These for patients or people that uh, require uh, special care such as elderly or children that are in fact monitored or, or supervised uh, at home or in medical ambulatory or in other point of care. Uh, we go now in the next chart, we go in specifically in the connected uh, uh, hospital domain. So medical equipments are uh, generally uh, wirelessly connected to monitor patient condition within uh, professional healthcare facilities. So uh, we are in the area of hospitals, emergency room, ambulances. And here connectivity facilitate uh, also the tracking of medical equipment as well as assets and pharmaceutical supplies. Hospital uh, IoT asset trackers, for instance, avoid uh, that uh, medical equipment is, uh, for instance, misplaced, lost, or stolen. And uh, on top of reporting, uh, on top of helping to report uh, the position and the status of medical assets, IoT enables, uh, enables also predictive maintenance of, of uh, this medical equipment. Uh, we go on the next chart uh, on uh, the connected patients area. So the shift uh, to wireless monitoring, as we say, is also happening for patients. This transition is motivated by both uh, uh, cost reduction and performance reasons. So, so there is in fact a, a growing emphasis uh, to shift the patient monitoring and care away from the hospital to uh, the home. So. When we think about remote monitoring solutions in this uh, in this domain, uh, we think about uh, uh, applications that are used to empower patients to be discharged from hospital at an earlier stage. And this clearly gives uh, important benefits in terms of expenditure uh, reduction. And more and more, um, these applications are used by patients also uh, with long-term chronic uh, conditions, such as uh, cardiac arrhythmias, lip apnea, or diabetes, or uh, blood pressure, or uh, blood coagulation problems. 
Finally, there are also, we have several connectivity enabled wearable or implantable devices uh, that are used again to track patients, but uh, they can be used in uh, other uh, situations like uh, in research settings such as uh, uh, clinical trials. In the next chart, uh, Malena, we go to the assisted living. So the assisted living and wellness tracking segment is uh, in fact, closely related to the remote remote uh, patient monitoring market. This is a category that comprises products such as a wearable personal emergency response system and installable sensor for monitoring uh, essentially daily activity. Um, these are solutions particularly well suited for the healthcare market as a in, in this, uh, with this solution, uh, they can enable senior citizens to live uh, uh, longly independent, to live independently. So it's essentially, a similar tracking uh, solution are also used for, as we said, to support children or people with disability or dementia. Um, an interesting uh, uh, innovation aspect in this area is, uh, is the uh, increasing adoption of uh, AI, artificial intelligence machine learning, which is used uh, generally to analyze the data and deviation for typical behavior of uh, monitoring patients. So finally, uh, also in this area, we have uh, uh, the more uh, consumer-oriented part, which is the wellness monitoring. Uh, these are, as we say, consumer-oriented applications that comprises typically GPS running watches and all the products and services that uh, essentially motivate and empower people to work on their well-being. We go on the next slide. Uh, here we enter in uh, the um, discussion, we, we introduce now the, the part related to wireless uh, connectivity. So, first of all, we have uh, to point out that uh, there is not just one correct way to connect medical devices uh, in wireless mode. We have, in fact, multiple uh, types of technologies and network topologies with different attributes of bandwidth uh, and data throughput and different characteristics in terms of coverage and signal propagation. So you can see here we have short range technologies such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy that are generally used in hospital or other point of care to connect sensor and medical devices to a gateway or to a mesh network. And then we have the end-to-end -end connectivity, the wireless connectivity offered by cellular networks. And this is an option that allows also uh, to do patient remote monitoring in uh, mobility conditions. Some of the, the advantages of, uh, of cellular are uh, bidirectionality. So, you, so your medical device can report vital statistics to a connected uh, um, remote uh, platform, uh, a cloud platform. But on the other side, uh, the bandwidth of cellular technology is also good, is appropriate enough in downlink. And uh, this allows, for instance, professionals in the clinical sector to communicate with your remote medical device in order to perform, for instance, uh, firmware updates or to set up new configuration or to do remote maintenance. So with cellular connectivity, uh, the patient is always connected wherever he is. And uh, this is another aspect that has a technology implication. So this reduces also the risk of data loss. And, and uh, with this uh, condition, uh, the application requires that uh, less data must be stored on the device between synchronization with a backend platform. So let's take some time now for our first uh, poll in this webinar. I give the microphone to Malina for our poll. Yes, thank you, Diego. We would like to ask you uh, two questions. So the first one you will see on the screen now. So which form of short range connectivity are you planning to use in your next design? So please select one of the following. Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth low energy and Wi-Fi, Bluetooth mesh or proprietary RF. So I give you some seconds to answer. There's answers coming in. Yeah. 
so I will close the poll now. Thank you so much. So let's look at what you have answered. So we can see that the slight majority of you are using Bluetooth low energy and Wi-Fi, but also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy. Thank you so much for participating. We jump quickly to the second question. What type of cellular connectivity are you planning to use in your next design? So please choose one of the following LTE M and BIOT, LTE CAT1, high speed LTE, 2G, 3G, or not using cellular connectivity. And while you are uh, responding to this, um, just want to say that we invite you to ask questions, of course. Um, if something has popped up, um, please feel free to submit your questions. So I will close the poll and let's look at your answers. We have the majority using LTM and BIOT. Thank you very much for participating and I will give the word over to Diego. Okay, Malina, thanks again and thanks to the audience for this interesting feedback. So we um, continue with a deep dive now on the cellular connectivity option for e-health. On the next slide, okay. So we see cellular connectivity is a technology that is growing uh, in complexity and is introducing different types of specification while moving towards 5G. In this chart, uh, you see that in the upper part of this graph, you see several uh, new ILT categories uh, that are launched essentially to serve, uh, to, to, to address the consumer broadband and automotive applications. Um, and these are applications that typically require high bandwidth and low latency. And in order to satisfy these, these needs, uh, we use, we need uh, modems with uh, more complex modems that generally have higher costs and require higher power consumption. Still moving toward the right, so the, the, the evolution is the enhanced mobile broadband variant of 5G, which is uh, again a, a, a variant of the specification that uh, is going to improve uh, uh, essentially to meet super high speed, the broad channel and high spectrum. So we go in the area of millimeter wave uh, requirements and uh, the benefits will be again essentially in terms of mobility and throughput. Uh, we will have a bandwidth that uh, will scale up to the 20 gigabit seconds in downlink and in 10 gigabit seconds in uh, uplink. On the central part of the graph, you see the uh, te cellular technology is also evolving towards uh, a form of a communication that is called ultra uh, reliable low latency. And uh, here are examples of vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, and also the so called 5G new radio. These are forms of cellular that have the primary objective to obtain a highly secure, reliable, and resilient communication with a very low latency. So the focus here is latency, and we will reach latency in the range of milliseconds. Um, there are actually some uh, healthcare applications that uh, will likely use augmented reality in the, in the near future, and these are the applications that are candidate to use this type of uh, ultra low, uh, ultra reliable, low latency communication. Eventually, if you focus on the lower part of the graph, you see other, again, other new form of LTE, uh, such as uh, the category LT category one, category M1, and narrowband LT. These are the type of LT uh, specification developed to address the needs of high connection density, energy efficiency, uh, low device complexity, low cost and extended coverage. LT CAT1, LTM and narrowband IoT are as well defined, defined as low power wide area. They are deployed in several, um, already deployed in several mobile networks on a worldwide scale and are, are using a growing number of uh, e applications. application. We go on uh, the next uh, slide, Malina. So uh, we see some examples. Mali, thank you, Maria. So here we see actually some examples of subset of uh, uBlocks portfolio with some examples of LPWA uh, modules. So we said that these are technology ideal for for uh, medical uh, use cases for standalone medical sensors and EL devices. And why are these uh, uh, technology ideal? Well. 
uh, when you consider a medical device, uh, let's take, for instance, a sensor uh, designed to measure uh, and communicate heart rate or uh, oxygen levels or glucose levels. So you deal typically with devices that, uh, that need to send and receive a small quantity of data, so in the range of bits to kilobits. Uh, these are uh, these are again devices that are typically portable, so that uh, need uh, energy efficiency to extend battery lifetime. And when they are used as alert system in several cases, so it is essential that these devices remain always reachable, even in a shielded area or in hard to reach places. Now, if you adopt uh, LPWE modules for your e-health application, you are using solutions, the technology solutions that, that are designed specifically to fulfill all these needs. In fact, LTM and narrowband IoT will offer you connectivity first in a license spectrum, so with no interference and guarantee quality of service. And uh, these modules uh, will have an architecture and a co-structure uh, that has been optimized for low throughput use case, so uh, with peak rates uh, that uh, if we go more into the details, also the peak rates of LTM is in the range of 375k bits uh, for downlink and uplink. For uh, uh, narrowband IoT, we are in the range of 27k for downlink and up to 72 for 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 uplink. So. Uh, Again, still using this type of co uh, communication modules, we'll have a guarantee that your medical device is indeed always reachable, since LPWA offers you an extended uh, range and a better penetration. In fact, if you compare uh, uh, with, 2G, with a 2G module, for instance, you can get uh, up to 15 dB improvement by using LTM and up to 21 dB improvement with narrowband IoT modules. Another aspect of LPWA is that, that these are modules that are certified in all major uh, markets, enabling uh, a, a scalable, uh, scalable uh, healthcare platform that can be uh, essentially deployed globally. Uh, in this chart, we also see some LT category one modules. Uh, we are quoting, for instance, LAR R2 and LAR R3 series. And these are modules that provide higher throughput and better uh, latency response and, and are more suitable for are more suitable for, for e-health uh, gateways use uh, at home or uh, uh, in other point of care. So yeah, typical application are, uh, as we said before, so a virtual assistance uh, uh, used to, uh, with a virtual assistant that uh, needs to uh, have like a verbal interaction with patients or uh, other health application that are designed with a, some with a more complex architecture, uh, an higher processing power, and that typically uh, needs uh, or uh, needs essentially um, the voice recognition or that have a classifier function, and again, typically uh, needs um, better throughput and better latency. If we move on the next slide. So we said that LPWA is, uh, is ideal, uh, is an ideal technology uh, for e-health care, and uh, uh, Ublox has been actually a market leader in the introduction of LPWA. We have actually invested in this technology since many years, launching uh, the first, uh, the world first commercial narrowband IoT module. We have actually uh, we've been within the first uh, uh, suppliers globally to get LTM uh, modules certified by, by American operators, and we keep innovating our portfolio, striving to serve uh, the healthcare um, market needs with unique features. So here you see an example of uh, what Ublox is doing differently. So we have in fact uh, recently launched SAR R5, uh, which is an LTM narrowband IoT module based on a, a chipset which is designed and developed completely by Ublox. Thanks to our core uh, IP ownership on LT modem, on our uh, knowledge about security and uh, power management, and our, our also core uh, um, IP ownership on GNSS technology, we are bringing with SARA 5 uh, the first uh, 5G LPWA modules that comes with a uh, 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 a number of distinctive features. So we we have an industry leading security, which is based on a robust uh, root of trust inside a discrete secure element. Uh, we have an efficient and lightweight key management solution, uh, which is again is, is being designed uh, to address uh, 
uh, low bandwidth application. SARR5 comes with an integrated multi constellation high performance GNSS. Uh, it will have a pre integrated power provisioning and uh, we'll have a hard, uh, hardware ready uh, eSIM and also activation service. And, uh, and we will have also an hardware ready uh, for powerful age computing. So our development uh, of SARR5 based on UBLOS chipset translates also into a commitment in terms of uh, longevity of supply, since uh, um, uh, UBLOS will not be dependent on th third party for the chipset. Uh, so we will not have a scenario of unexpected uh, product uh, uh, end of life, for instance. If we go on the next chart. Here, uh, we said that SARR5 will come with an integrated GNSS engine. This, uh, this is based on, uh, on a UBLOX MA chipset uh, designed with no compromises uh, in terms of uh, sensitivity, accuracy, and time to fix. And still, SARR5 will bring to the market other unique features, for instance, the possibility uh, to run LT and GNSS simultaneously. And this is indeed an interesting feature for wearables, for sure, for IoT trackers, but also for e-health application. Think about, for example, what happens if you if you are forced to do time sharing, and if you are using other commercial LTT mo modules and you're using LT and GNSS an antenna, sharing GNSS antenna, uh, uh, you risk to lose paging events because, for instance, of a running GNSS activity. While if you use SAR R5, thanks to the support of separate antennas, your EL application will be always reachable from the server, giving you a maximum flexibility, and you will be in a position to provide better safety condition to all your monitor patients. Uh, we go now to, we, I pass the microphone for the next chart to Pelle for our session on short range technologies. Thank you, Diego. Good morning, US, and good afternoon, Europe, if you're still on board this uh, webinar. Uh, this section is a little bit update on, uh, on the latest extension and enhancement that is provided by different uh, organizations when it comes to the short-range technology that we are heavily involved in uh, for medical uh, and other use cases, uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth, Live Energy, and Wi-Fi. <coughs> So let's look at uh, what these new enhancements are. <clears throat> this is not completely new, but uh, Bluetooth 5 has been around for more than two years, but I still want to highlight it because it adds a couple of features that are really important uh, for some of the uh, medi medical device applications and use cases. As I said, been around for more than two years and it includes three groundbreaking enhancements that are described in the three images above uh, here in the picture. Uh, increased data rate, longer range or more data in, in beacons. <clears throat> I will go into a little bit, little detail in each of them. Uh, the two megabit uh, physical interface that is now provided by Bluetooth 5 compared to previously only one megabit per second uh, will of course then allow double the speed compared to previously. Uh, so the same amount of data is now being sent on, on half the time compared to Bluetooth 4.2, which also results in the, dropping the total power consumption by almost 50%. In addition, shorter time in the air because of the higher data rate improves the coexistence with other 2.4 gigahertz radios in the environment, including other Bluetooth radios. So it's uh, improving the, the coexistence in general in the 2.4 gigahertz band. But the driving force here is to get higher, higher data rate. Uh, there is another mode that can also be selected uh, in, in solutions running Bluetooth 5, and that instead of have high data rate, you can go low data rate. And as a result, you get longer range. So the extended range mode includes uh, two new modulation options that have been introduced 125 kilobit per second or 500 kilobit per second. With the lowest data rate, 125 kilobit per second, it will basically extend the range with the same output power up to four times compared to previously. In line of sight, that represents about 
more than one kilometer. In fact, with, with good solutions, uh, good antenna uh, performance and good uh, solutions around that, you can reach even further. Our own measurements here on the beach in Malmö, Sweden, on a sunny day, as you can see in the picture in the middle, we reach up to 1.45 kilometer, where we would still be able to connect and keep the connection alive, however, with a fairly low data rate. The third uh, enhancement in Bluetooth 5 is more data. Uh, the th Bluetooth 5 brings then the, uh, to the table extended advertising capability. Advertising is er originated the method to connect Bluetooth LE devices together, but has also been uh, uh, used for broadcasting capabilities like beacons. Uh, Apple has specified their protocol on those 32 bytes that are available. I call it iBeacon. There are other companies that has done similar things. 32 bytes is a little bit low, short of data for uh, some use cases. So Bluetooth 5 brings an extended capability in this beacon uh, uh, broadcast message up to 255 bytes that can then be used for uh, applications requiring more data. Bluetooth 5 enables new possibilities and new use cases specifically uh, in the medical device. One example is the higher data rate. As a result, we'll use less time in the air and as a result, we'll use less power. So it's very uh, suitable for power battery operated medical devices, for example, uh, wearable sensor devices. Next slide. Bluetooth Mesh was introduced uh, half uh, a year later than Bluetooth 5. It's been now around for almost two years. Um, Bluetooth Mesh in a network running Bluetooth Mesh information is uh, transmitted among knowns in broadcast messages, basically using the advertising message that was previously discussed on the previous slide. Nodes have different uh, uh, roles. They are configured in the provisioning process to what role they're going to take. Uh, so, for example, configured as relay nodes, they will basically listen for traffic around their neighborhood. Everything they receive uh, they will basically retransmit and, and by that extend the range of the mesh network well beyond the capability of an individual Bluetooth link. So in the graph to the right you can see the red circles representing the relay nodes and they will then extend the messages from one node to the other. This is what we call flooding mesh. There are some restrictions built in not to over flood the mesh, uh, the mesh network. Uh, two examples is uh, time to live and, and other relay uh, restrictions. You, a relay never repeats the same message more than once. The ex enhanced ex exchange of data within the mesh network is described and, and run as a publish subscribe model, as you can see on the picture on the bottom to the left. So uh, devices in the mesh network during the provisioning and configuration are being configured to be part of a mesh network and then of course be part of a, a publish subscribe model with, with different um, addresses and messages. So for example in the, in the picture here one of the light switches has been configured to deliver messages to the address in model kitchen and three of the lights to the left here has been then configured to listen for the message coming from uh, this model kitchen and will of course act according to the, the switch. There are also low power nodes that can be part of a mesh network and low power nodes running from a battery they will have, have to rely on friend nodes, the green ones in the image. Uh, and the green uh, nodes here, the friend nodes, are the ones with more capability. They will basically uh, store and cache information that is intended for the low power nodes until the low power node is out of low power stage and ex can accept uh, information. 
Bluetooth Mesh has a Mesh has a series of security features built in. For example, all messages are both encrypted and authenticated, and every message include a unique sequence number used to safeguard against replay attacks. Uh, key refresh is another feature that is built in, and 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 so on. Uh, every node will have during the provisioning uh, state uh, being given a network key so all nodes in the same, with the same network key basically belongs to the same mesh network on top of that each node will also have an application key being pro provided to to the node in the provisioning process in order to know what kind of application and what kind of messages they're going to transmit in the mesh network next slide so an example here from a, from a typical hospital uh, use case potentially. Uh, Bluetooth Mesh has made very good progress in, in smart lighting applications. So as I described in the previous slide, using uh, uh, switches, your smartphone and so on to control lighting in a building, not only in a small uh, home building, but also in an office or in a hospital. With this smart lighting, mesh network in place, we basically have an infrastructure in to enable other use cases at the same time. So in the hospital, we can think of sensor networks uh, and sensors being connected to the same network for reading temperature, doing location services, tracking on medical assets like beds and, and the other medical equipment. Next slide. The latest enhancement to the Bluetooth specification provided by the consortium is Bluetooth 5.1. It's about six months old, this specification. It adds one major new thing, and that's direction finding. Until now, applications has, um, or Bluetooth has been used for, for indoor location using beacons. The left picture will show how it has been used so far. Uh, a device that is when you want to track, will send track will send beacons, and you have uh, multiple anchor points on fixed location, like the locator in the picture, uh, are used to estimate the location of the tag using the signal strength that they receive from the tag. Bluetooth 5 uh, introduces a feature that is called direction finding, where the Bluetooth receiver not only receives the signal strengths but also can determine the direction from where the signal is being transmitted by using an antenna array. Uh, the angle of arrival method of direction finding in combination with the signal strength method may improve accuracy down to a few centimeters. Next slide. Let us also take a look at uh, the other short range technology that we are heavily involved in. Uh, the Wi-Fi or uh, A2211. Uh, A2211AX is the latest specification uh, and we see already some solutions out there and, and we are of course also involved in development of products based on this. It brings uh, basically three uh, main enhancements to the table. Uh, first of all the density. Uh, speed is normally not an issue in IoT networks <coughs> but it's the congestion and how the network handles a lot of devices. Access point uh, will handle more and more devices. For example, in a hospital, in an office, more and more devices that you carry are Wi-Fi enabled, so this, the network will be heavily loaded. What a what A211 AX brings is that it's made to solve this problem by complete redesign of how the network operates, taking some of the best practices from LTE with frequency division multiplexing, the access point in a network can communicate to multiple client devices at the same time in the same message, as described in the picture to the right. The battery life is, uh, can also be uh, improved by data can be transmitted faster, faster shortened time, but also thanks to new features called wake time scheduling, when an access point can tell a client to go to low power mode and wake up, uh, uh, provide schedule when to wake up, and that by that also conserve uh, battery lifetime. 
With wider or multiple simultaneous channels, the data rate can also give considerable higher than, than currently. We're talking here about multiple gigab gigabit per second. For connected uh, hospitals, the handling of more density networks and low power consumption are probably the, the most important, interesting and important features that AX brings to the table. Finally, the, uh, there is an organization called the Wi-Fi Alliance, which uh, performs interrupt testing of, of uh, 8 or 2 11 devices. And once you have tested those, you can sort of say that your device is compliant with the Wi-Fi and get the Wi-Fi certification logo on your product. For Wi-Fi uh, 8 or 2 11 AX, uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance has also given a popular name, Wi-Fi 6 and they will have a certification program for this kind of technology available during 2019. Next slide. So what do we offer in QBlox related to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? First of all, we have two uh, main architectures. Uh, Host-based is what we call the most, uh, where the most of the software stack and application run on a quite heavy Linux uh, host uh, microcontroller architecture, and we provide a radio. Uh, for standalone, uh, where the module includes the MCU, able to run all the software, basically, even including the customer application, um, uh, we, we also have that solution, which we call then, as I said, standalone. So let's uh, go to the next picture to see an overview of what we have to offer uh, in the product portfolio when it comes to standalone. Here you see everything from multi-radio modules that can do Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, and Wi-Fi on 2.4 or 5 gigahertz channel. They come uh, preloaded with Uconnect software, which is our in own software that runs on the module, configurable for 30 to 50 different use cases depending on what module is selected. Uh, there is a number of Wi-Fi uh, plus Bluetooth, but also a lot of Bluetooth Low Energy only modules that you can see here a lot of Ninas. Um, we recently acquired a company, or a module business from a company called Rigado, and by that acquisition, we also got five other modules into our product portfolio. That's the BMD you can see in the table. Uh, some of them are all open as, as for putting customer application inside the MCU that is residing in the module. Uh, we have a different mix of Bluetooth Low Energy, uh, Zigbee and Thread, uh, etc. And from a certain time in two years back, we, we provide all our modules with secure boot. Next slide. On the host-based architecture, we currently have four modules available, uh, all from high-end uh, AC, 11 AC module, 2x2 two two MIMO, running on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, uh, as well as supporting Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy, all the way down to a single radio 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi module uh, for various use cases where, where uh, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi Bluetooth is being used for more uh, high demanding applications. That was all from the short range update. Now back to Diego. So we will, I will jump in here with two questions for you. So it's time to get active again. We would like you to answer the following question. What is your yearly consumption of modules for e-health applications? So please select one that applies to you less than 1K, 1 to 20K or over 20K. Give you some time to answer. Right, the votes are coming in. So I will close the poll now and then we will look at what you have answered. So 89% of you less than 1K and then some 11, uh, 1 to 20K. Thank you very much for sharing this information. Um, we will jump to the second question, which is, are you using outdoor or indoor positioning technology in your design? So you can choose between outdoor only, indoor only, both outdoor and indoor, or not using positioning technology. So please go ahead and select one. Also, if you have questions to any of the topics, please feel free to, to post those and um, our expert will be answering those towards the end of the presentation. 
So I will close this poll and then we will look at the answers. So we can see that it's a bit of split between outdoor only and both outdoor and indoor. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, let's give the word over to Diego again. Why security matters. Thank you, Malena, and thank you very much, Pelle. So let's spend some time now, in the final part of the webinar, to see why security matters in IoT, and in particular, why it matters in the e-health segment. And next slide. So yeah, in today, so in, the, in our discussion, we have acknowledged that uh, when you care about your heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen levels, or even stress level, or glucose uh, um, glycemic levels, so, um, by designing wirelessly connected medical devices, you can enable an efficient, immediate, and seamless access to this type of uh, uh, healthcare data. So, and certainly, this uh, scenario brings a very large number of benefits uh, that uh, essentially translate in, uh, into a new healthcare model that we could define uh, as continuum of care. So essentially a model where we get better diagnostic, better post-discharge and compliance monitoring, and a general improvement in, um, in the management of chronic disease. But so all very important improvements. But what about security, data privacy, confidentiality, and safety? Um, if we go on the next chart, so we have some interesting figures from, from analysts that, yeah, yeah, we show we see here, so essentially that IoT security has quickly become a global concern and industry uh, priority. So in fact, 84% of organizations that have adopted IoT have experienced an IoT-related security breach. And it's also interesting to point out to note that only 10% of IoT device manufacturer reported feeling fully confident that their device had adequate security protocols in place. So uh, let's jump back to another poll with Malina specifically on this area of uh, security. Yes, thank you, Diego. So I will uh, launch it for you now. Please select one of the following. Do you need a secure element or crypto engine in your application? And you can choose between we know or yes I'm implementing it now yes I'm implementing it in my next design thank you so much for voting so I'll close the poll and we will look at the answers um, very interesting split actually among the three thank you so much then if you also like to answer our last poll is does your e-health application require fda or mdd clearance no fda only mdd only or both all right so i will close this one and um let's look at the answers actually majority of you say no on this one so i thank you very much for participating and i give the word over to diego thanks again malena so we are approaching the the, the conclusion of uh, this webinar let's focus on solution that enable uh, enable healthcare transformation uh, on the next chart so before going to the conclusion, we should uh, uh, spend some time on consideration about uh, the needs and the challenges that uh, we we will face in uh, connected uh, in connecting IoT uh, solution to patients from patients to caregivers. So, essentially, connected healthcare should fulfill uh, a basic need, which is the one to establish a secure, safe and safe communication channel between patients and caregivers. And uh, today, this is not a simple task. It is still represent a, a challenge since these, uh, this connection should be done in a way uh, that where, where we accomplish also a proper level of uh, security, data privacy, and confidentiality. If we take, for example, a medical device that transmits healthcare data from a person wearing a medical sensor to a doctor in an hospital, you have a simple option to use a smartphone or a tablet as an e-health hub. But in this way, you might face multiple problems. 
you will face uh, immediately risk when uh, when you, your, your data is in transit from the sensor to the smartphone app. So data, in fact, can be sniffed with a privacy problem or forged with a problems of safety. Uh, so you will face essentially side attacks that can occur uh, if you use unsecure protocols. And there is also a risk that uh, data is stored in an unsecure area of your mobile phone. Then you can incur in problems of coverage uh, on your mobile if you are indoor or if your mobile is in a shielded area. And eventually, uh, when data is in transit in the cloud, you might have a vulnerability problem. This happens, uh, for instance, when uh, data is not encrypted in the entire trip from the device to the service provider. So you will have in, in this scenario, in fact, uh, intermediate nodes uh, in the clouds that are visible in clear, and so you face uh, problems of access control. And finally, you might even face safety problems. So, for instance, when sensible data is sniffed or forged in transit, and this data is used to blackmail patients or even alter measurements and uh, cause a real physical harm to persons. So, when um, uh, you use uh, your IoT solution and uh, your IoT solution uh, are compromising uh, in safety, or privacy, this impacts your uh, top line, uh, your revenue top line, because uh, your uh, customer might freeze uh, payments or uh, you might have problems in cost that uh, will uh, could skyrocket since you will have to deal with the damage not only to your product but uh, to the safety of human lives uh, re related to the safety of human lives or to the problem caused to the company, your company image. So. Uh, indeed, uh, healthcare, uh, in the healthcare industry, it is paramount to protect equipment revenues and patient safety, ensuring uh, essentially authenticity and integrity of data, but also guaranteeing that medical devices are authentic. So in the next uh, slide, we see how Ublox is uh, trying to respond to these uh, challenges. So at Ublox, uh, we are striving to introduce world-class security for our connectivity products and bring the superior security to the IoT market. And let's see how we, uh, what makes up Ublox Security Foundation. So we have four areas in this uh, slide. First, the communication module uh, needs to have a unique and immutable identity that is tied up, is tied with uh, the root of trust and secure backend to continuously monitor and detect if it is ever act or cloned. The root of trust can be embodied in using a trusted execution environment, or as it happened in our newest SARA 5 platform, it is enabled through a dedicated secure element. Second, the module needs to be able to authenticate and run only authorized firmware, as well as any future update delivered over the air with FOTA. Next, the connection to the cloud needs to be secure. So this happens via secure libraries that allow generation and storage of crypto functions and key in our modules that then are later connected cryptographically, cryptographically with uh, the cloud. And eventually, the data security should be ensured with a root of trust based keys uh, and certificates and crypto functions so that the device can authenticate communication to any server and ensure confidentiality and integrity using industry proven standard uh, protocols. On the next uh, slide, we have a final slide where we essentially summarize our conclusion. So, as we said, Ublox strategy is essentially focused uh, to support the health application, uh, um, our, our strategy is centered on innovation, and uh, we bring innovation through the introduction with uh, specific technology like uh, low power wide area, uh, where we bring superiority, superior. Um, feature like uh, extended coverage or uh, energy efficiency. And in addition to innovation, our strategy is focused on a solid implement uh, security implementation, uh, which is uh, a security that is implemented across all our portfolio. So by designing medical IoT devices with, with Ublox module, we'll be in a position to get device security and device security is uh, um, is the base of our security of secure solution because it's bringing confidentiality integrity and authenticity this is done as we said with our root of trust the foundation of all our security system that allows to derive all the 
security function features and services. Again, with your box module, we'll, we will be able to maintain the trust in the device. And uh, this is obtained with uh, specific features such as secure boot, secure updates, secure updates over the air, and secure interfaces. And you will also be in, uh, will have the possibility to limit, for instance, uh, or block ACT devices so, uh, so that the, these devices uh, do not spread the attack across the whole network uh, with a feature that is uh, the remote uh, decommissioning. So in this case, essentially, you have the possibility to quarantine uh, compromised devices remotely. Device security is a key aspect, it's one side of the coin. The other side is data security. Uh, this data security is essential, again, to guarantee identity, authenticity of the data, and uh, last but not least, also the firmware protection of your device. And uh, also in this area, your blocks comes with solution to help you to help you to protect uh, data at rest. Uh, so in this case, at rest with secure storage and secure vault. And, and this is a huge advantage because by using your blocks, so you will not have, uh, you will not need to have uh, to purchase a, a TPM or a so-called a crypto, a crypto chip or crypto engine. And uh, when we think about security, uh, protecting data in transit, uh, we uh, enable real end-to-end -end encryption. And uh, when I say real, I mean, um, uh, if we consider, uh, uh, again, uh, an example of ELT applications, so say a glucose meter that uh, transmits uh, wireless data. So this data will, uh, you will be sure that this data is uh, received only by a specific doctor that can see the results, since this doctor is the only person that has been authorized to decrypt this sensible data. So nobody else, not even the device maker or any insurance company will be able to access uh, this type of sensible data. And this does not happen typically on standard solution that, uh, for instance, rely on TLS, TLS uh, where this protocol is securing just point to point. So if you have intermediate stops, there are uh, data, there is data in clear. So uBlocks, in summary, is, is bringing to the market uh, a rich feature set of security. We have described a few of them uh, in addition to the one I have described, there are several other related to access management. And what is important, the most important part is that uBlock solution is bringing simplicity and fast time to market. So our customer, you, potentially will not need to, to, bother, with, uh, to, to bother with complex security algorithms. So you will benefit of an out-of-the-box of the experience and uh, so you can keep focusing on your core business. Next slide, the final one. So uh, we said that uh, in this webinar, so we are com 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 completed this webinar. We hope you enjoyed uh, the, this journey in the uh, ecosystem of connected medical Internet of Things, uh, an area, uh, uh, an industry which has a huge potential of growth. And uh, Ublox is actually already an active player in this paramount uh, transformation uh, that is happening in this industry. We are serving several medical IoT partners. Uh, we are striving to bring innovation to them, uh, essentially with a combination of our three core technologies that we see here. So uh, essentially cellular, short range, and positioning technology that we offer in the form of chips and modules. So if you are designing or planning to design e-health application, we will be, uh, be glad to be part of your journey. For now, uh, Pell and I thank you uh, for your attention and uh, we spend the last minutes for our question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you, Diego. I will head over to Sabrina who will take your questions. All right, and we're close to out of time, so let's just take a couple of questions here. Um, so the first one, uh, how do you guarantee that wirelessly connected healthcare IoT devices can remain secure over time when they are deployed in the field? So I guess this is for me, Sabrina. So this, thanks, this is an interesting question. And in fact, as we say, security is, is, is not just a one-time thing. Uh, it, it has to stay in the entire product life cycle, as we say. So over time, uh, the device is subject to different types of malicious attacks. So 
We said that initially we obtain device security by establishing a root of trust, which is, a, a, as we said, the foundation of all security system that allows to derive the security function feature and services. While over time, uh, you will need to be able to maintain the trust in the device. And the trust is uh, obtained, uh, is achieved by specific feature implemented in your blocks modules, such as the secure boot, the secure firmware update over the air and secure interfaces. And another aspect to maintain security on your, let's say, deployed uh, devices deployed in the field is a feature that we have described, which is the remote decommissioning. So uh, the possibility to block, uh, to spread the attack across the whole uh, network, um, uh, essentially by quarantine uh, compromised device uh, remotely. That's it. Thank you, Diego. Um, let me have, there's one more question I think we can get around to. This one, I believe, is a question for Pele. Um, so the question is, what security do you provide for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi modules, and do you offer a security patch process? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, part of like uh, Diego already described, uh, our module that includes Secure Boot. Uh, currently in select modules, we started to implement Secure Boot two years ago, and, and that's uh, standard for us going forward. Uh, on the Bluetooth BLE specifically, we implement uh, the highest level of, of security according to the standard, uh, Secure Connections, uh, which, is, uh, which uses FIPS-approved algorithms uh, for device authentication and encryption encryption um, is provided by the NIST guide on, on Bluetooth security where they specify uh, what level they consider as, as good. Um, we're also involved in some research project to implement uh, new security features that are specifically developed for constrained devices. Uh, for Wi-Fi specifically, we are currently supporting WPA2 for enterprise level. Um, which is mandatory for passing Wi-Fi certification today. Uh, there is a new updated version WPA3 uh, in place that will become mandatory for the uh, Wi-Fi Alliance certification from mid next year, as we have heard. And that's part of what we implement in our, in our product right now. Uh, patches, we are following uh, the, the security uh, development in uh, in the different uh, organizations as well as internally as Diego has uh, provided the uh, information about so we have uh, always possibility to update the, the firmware in our modules to fix uh, security the security issues and patch uh, flaws that might might come up uh, it can either be done uh, from from uh, the host of the medical device but we have also some, some modules that support uh, to do it possible over the wireless interface, so-called over the air. That's it. All right, thank you, Pelle. Um, and I think I see we are a couple minutes over time, so let's conclude our Q&A at this point. If you have any further questions, feel free to uh, submit them through the questions panel and we will get back to you separately via email. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina, and thanks uh, to everyone for uh, joining us this uh, hour. If you have further questions or uh, need further uh, information, here are some go-to places. And uh, we really hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, webinar and we look forward to connecting with you again soon. Have a very nice day. Goodbye.